Hey guys, welcome to Sketch A Day Live. This is Spencer, and it is Friday, May 8th. If you're joining on the Instagram, this stream will go for just a little bit, and then we're gonna peel off and hang out on YouTube. So if you wanna catch the full stream of me drawing, talking, submit requests, all of that good stuff, you need to head over to YouTube, because that's where the action is. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> I do this three times a week. Now, sometimes more, depending on, uh, <coughs> pardon me, depending on the situation. Actually, before we get started, um, I do want to, let's see if I can do this here. I do want to point out, I'm not going to be able to do it for the Instagrammers, but um, I do have some new content on my site I wanted to point out to you guys. So, let's see. Boom, there we go. So, just a quick reminder. All the sketches I produce on the stream will be available here in the Google Drive. That link is in the stream description if you're checking on YouTube. So we have things like, let's see, April 8th. Let's see what we had. Looks like we did some sort of hairdryer thing. So all of that's in the Google Drive, okay? You guys will be able to have access to that. It goes as far back as January. I'm gonna start deleting some stuff. So if you wanna check it out, head over there. Also the 3d printed marker caddy this thing for you guys looking on the overhead um this thing right here so i i recently uploaded a blog article just about the process but also more importantly included the 3d files for you to download so if you want to check that out you can head over to sketchaday.com slash blog and you'll see an article there with some animated gifs video and a download link included as well so check that out um, let me know what you think and as always appreciate you being here check in let me know where you're watching from we're gonna kick things off with a warm-up let me cut there we go <laughs> <coughs> pardon me I went for a run and I ran really fast <laughs> so I'm a little bit um, winded still this morning but anyhow we're gonna kick things off with a little bit of warm-up if you are watching on the Instagram once again head over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com to catch the full stream thanks for joining let me know where you're watching from if you have any ideas suggestions i do have a couple ideas in my head of what i want to draw got some requests prior to the stream an interesting one to do kind of a white toilet faucet type situation i've never done one so i think it would be a good good challenge for me um I may do a couple other products here and there. So feel free to drop suggestions. If I don't get suggestions, then I'll just keep the show short today. All right, if you do wanna make a suggestion, you need to be on the YouTube. So head over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com or sketchaday.live. That's another good place to be. Let's try a different little exercise today. We'll do circles between lines. I'm using a ballpoint pen. Thought I'd mix it up. I've been using a felt pen a lot. The cool thing with drawing with a felt pen though is it helps you build your confidence so that you can jump to things like a ballpoint pen and still have that confident decisive approach. It's a great way to just train your brain, train your muscles, and be ready to put down those good sexy strokes so yeah if you want to make a suggestion do it in the youtube or the discord um in fact i need to open discord i forgot I haven't been in there much this week i've been working on a personal lighting project doing a lot of cad and sketching and a bunch of other stuff so um apologies there ak ninja is asking could i make a college id portfolio setup tutorial Yes, I could do that um, kind of in a generic sense is what I would probably do, meaning, what, what am I doing? <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I can go over that in a future video, but I'm not going to design your portfolio for you, but just give you a couple pointers, all right? All right, so now we're going to do some ellipses here. Trying to make these wider as we move down the page. Thanks for joining the stream last time, it was super fun. In case you missed it, we covered a lot of good stuff. Things like redrawing, this is actually a sketch I redid from an old sketchbook. 
um, that I had from college. So redid this, went through the process of doing that. Once again, if you want to make a suggestion, head over to the YouTube. That's where it will be. That's where I'll accept suggestions. So head over there. That's where you'll get the full show, which typically goes a little more than an hour. So I prefer to interact there and have you guys hit me up on that side. So if you want to make a suggestion, if you want to see something, head over there. That's where you need to be watching and interacting, okay? All right. Let's see. We got Lynette. What's up? I'm not sure how to say your name. G-I-G-S Van Hef. Joining from the Netherlands. Hello. My aunt. Old Chevy and Ford trucks. Yeah, I could do that. Um, Foxhound, what's up? From France. AKA Ninja Shaz. Hello, hello. Got a lot of regulars. So thanks for joining. Hope you're having a good Friday. I kicked things off with a run. It felt good. There was a run in solidarity of a tragic event that happened uh, a few months ago actually um, and I won't speak on the specifics of it just to remain non-controversial but I've been a little bit down this week after hearing the news and so it was good to just run it was I felt like I'm not um, woo woo or like <laughs> totally you know the universe this or that but um, it felt I felt just a different energy running this morning and it was it was good to get out get some fresh air um and just be be in nature so that was my morning but yeah weird just weird times lots of uh people losing jobs and opportunities are hard to come by so um i really do appreciate you being here and watching Lots of good stuff coming soon. Once again, check out the blog if you want the marker caddy file and you want to download it. That's where you need to be on the blog. This is just a microphone I'm moving in frame if you're watching on the YouTube. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Okay. Someone on Instagram is asking if this is the one time I go live. I go live three times a week. If you visit my YouTube, hit subscribe and turn on alerts, you won't miss the streams. So, I go live a lot. I don't know why I keep doing ellipses, but I'm going to do one more row <laughs> and then show you why I do this. We're keeping it analog today. I was going to do Cintiq stuff, but just ran out of time setting up. So, I'll make sure to have that ready for Sunday. And I think we're going to... Kick it back to Sci-Fi Sunday on Sunday, and we'll do some stuff in Photoshop. I'll make sure to announce that so you guys all know what's coming. Probably work on two renderings, two sketches, two renderings, Sci-Fi Sunday. I've had this scene bouncing around in my head for a while, so kind of want to tackle that. Maybe do some other stuff. Geis. Geis. Okay. Geis. Guys from the Netherlands, hello. I've never been to, well, I shouldn't say I've never been to the Netherlands. I've been to Amsterdam on the way to Germany, but I didn't really get to stop and, you know, chill and really enjoy it. So just showing you guys why we warm up. As always, a lot of you like drawing cars, right? So all this stuff is so that have all this information packed into this warm-up right a couple lines here and granted this is a really rough sketch but gives you an idea hopefully of why this is important so if you're tired of warming up just remember it's all practice it's all practice so you can draw things like a car Again, I know a lot of you like like to see done, so cars, shoes, all of that stuff. Let me know if you're liking the recaps, by the way. I've been publishing those on the YouTube just to kind of pull out the information from the live show segments. I also uploaded a video this week on shadows, just some observations from real life, and kind of the mechanics of shadows. 
So if you've struggled with those or want to get some additional help, that's a great place to be. Special shout out as always to the Patreons for supporting Sketch A Day. There's a new link in the video frame if you're watching on YouTube, if you'd like to be a part of that. Patreons get access to the pre-show. Kind of an experiment right now, but an opportunity to get ahead of the pack, so to speak, make suggestions, kind of help steer the direction of the show. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. You also get a free sticker to say thank you. But yeah, much appreciated. So that's why we warm up, so we can do things like this, okay? All right, it's not perfect, but this progression of ellipses, you can do a lot of stuff with it, whether it's a car or it could be a flashlight, for example. You know, even taking some of these ellipses to make, make those breaks, like so. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this, so that's why I like these warm-up exercises beyond the mechanics of just doing a warm-up. All right, so let's kick things off with <clears throat> some sketching here. Welcome again, everyone, if you're joining on the YouTube. Instagrammers, I'm going to peel off in about five minutes here, so if you want to catch the full show, head over to youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. Yes, Lynette, I am putting the marker holder to use. <laughs> There are some improvements I'm going to likely make and then um, use that for an update. I'm going to try and do some toned paper sketching today. That's why I've got this out. Um, I got a request to do... I haven't done one of these in a long time, so this could be a colossal wreck. Could be a colossal wreck. What qualifications does a car designer require to excel? Um, I think good visual communication, but besides that, just the base skills and any industrial designer would have. Um, User-centered design thinking, thinking outside the box. Um, I think in any corporate setting, you need to have good people skills, an understanding of the business, how it works, all that good stuff. All right. So I got a request to do some white stuff today, and I thought, you know, maybe it'd be fun to do something like a faucet sink at least that was the request so i'm going to start by just framing it out with some ballpoint just really light on this paper and like i said i have not done one of these in a very very long time so hopefully hopefully this turns out okay but if not we can say we all learned something right but the idea here is i'm just sketching with my ballpoint pen and trying to be very light because, well, for a couple reasons. One, I actually don't have, um, actually I might be able to use it. Use it. I, was, I was just thinking I don't have any chart packs, which is what I typically use when I'm sketching with ballpoint, but I don't have any chart packs that are um, brown. <laughs> so, because I wanted this to be wood, this little kind of side piece here. Um, going down so just a little wood vignette thing maybe as a leg or foot and then let's go ahead and you know, sketch some sort of backsplash here as well and then I'm gonna extend this line out like so and then we need some sort of fixture okay so I'm just gonna put simple fixture here Chrome stuff should be easy enough. The hard part is going to be that wood section. All right, so just sketching these fixture things in. All right, maybe something like that. I mean, ideally what I'd wanna do is have this follow more of a, a curve of an ellipse. So let me go ahead and fix that. A little bit there we go so that feels better like so and maybe just a little bit of a base plate overflow gap 
and some sort of background line here. I mean, if the drain were showing, I'm gonna extend that down a little bit, but maybe a little bit of the P-trap. Plumbing, that could be chrome. Could be chrome. But yeah, I haven't done one of these in a while. Lynette says, you don't have today, you don't have to today, but he was wondering if you could draw a roadster. Ah, okay, I'll look, I'll look that up. If not today, maybe, um, maybe Sunday. Deck of Kings is asking any suggestions on line quality. Um, one of the best suggestions I've heard or gotten in the past was from a guy I worked with at GM. And one of the things he, he loves sketching with ballpoint pen, but one of the things he tried to do was, um, he tried to limit the number of times he went over a line. Okay, so that's with ballpoint pen. A little bit on reflections here. I am planning on doing a video to explain reflections a little bit, but I can speak on this if you guys want me to on the stream today just a little bit anyhow so he he told himself you know no more than twice over a line okay and for him and the style that he liked to work in it was good because he was kind of limiting how many times that stroke hit the paper all right <clears throat> which made for a, a less what I would consider to be hairy stroke or appearance to the sketch. All right, so now I'm gonna take some light grays. I've got some basic grays here, one, two, three. And I'm gonna need some white, white pencils specifically. So I'm just gonna grab that. I have lots of black pencils for some reason. There we go. For some reason I don't know where I put my white pencils but I got lucky. And I've got a couple white pens here to help out as well. <clears throat> All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna need some blue for the faucet as well. So what I'm gonna do here is always, you always wanna work light until you get it right, okay? This is a very simple faucet thing, okay? So nothing super complicated here. Um, flat sides, all that good stuff, but I'm gonna start by just shading on the side, like so. Because even if something's white, you're gonna get some shadowing happening. And because I am using a chart pack marker, I can um, work over the ballpoint pen just fine. And it doesn't affect or cause the pen stroke to bleed. And that's kind of what I was talking about. So just mapping and putting in some shadows here. <clears throat> I can even start on the chrome. So let's say I'm standing in the room and I'm somewhere here. I want a very strong kind of reflective element in the middle of this pipe, like so. On the back side of the pipe, you're gonna get ref the pipe reflecting into the pipe. So a little dark line here as well. And just on the back side of that. All right. Okay, guys, on the Insta, I'm going to peel out. If you want to see the rest of this, head on over to sketchaday.live or youtube.com slash sketchaday.com. Peace out, Holmes. All right, we're back. <clears throat> Let's see. Sorry, just a sec. All right. We're good. Woo, we're back. Hello, Matt. Welcome. Thanks for joining. So we're just uh, rendering in white here. And so now I can take the white pencil and start to do things like highlights. You, know, you want to do your lightest lights next to your darkest dark. So even the, the top here 
I want there to be good contrast on this edge. And you can really see how just even a light bit of pencil is really causing this to start to pop. This paper is really rough though, and it's not real Canson paper, it's just some cheap tone paper I found at my local store. But it's a lot easier to do white stuff if you have kind of a paper that has a mid-tone where you can go lighter and darker on that paper. It's a lot easier. Trying to be mindful of where there might be reflections in the white, so this little wood thing, right? Or even the backsplash here. That's why I'm not going super bright on that side. Just trying to be mindful of that. We're gonna have the faucet reflecting in as well. Okay. So just mapping all of that out. Very, very light on the bottom here. But if this is something that's interesting to you or you like the idea of using toned paper, just experiment, figure out what works for you. Same principles, you know, even look at how I'm holding my pencil, holding it about halfway up the barrel. Again, so I can see what I'm doing. Because if I'm, if I'm holding it like this, it makes it really hard for me to see where I'm going. But if I back off, I can see the whole paper and sketch much more comfortably, okay? Now on this side, what I'm gonna do, let me think. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shade with a little bit of white over this base gray. And that's to suggest maybe there's some reflected light in the scene. If you do want this to be really shiny, just apply a bit more pressure to the pencil to get some more opaque areas. And you can also come over this with the pen when you get to that point of needing to just punch things even more. So Sketch A Day Live, thanks for joining. We do this three times a week. This is the Wednesday, or sorry, this is the Friday show. Just did the Wednesday show two days ago. A little bit confused there. <clears throat> but we also go live Wednesday, Sundays, and today is the Friday show. So thanks for being here and being a part of this. If you'd like to contribute, links are on the video frame. Some of you have asked in the past, and thank you so much for those contributions in the past. Times are certainly uncertain, so certainly uncertain. If anything is certain right now, it's uncertainty. I say that 10 times fast. Um, <clears throat> but yes, times are uncertain, and uh, I much appreciate the love and support. All right, let's switch to some browns, because I want to get this wood thing in. I'm not particularly in love with it, but I think I'm going to just pull it all the way down. So let me grab my browns. The, reli the reliable browns I have are Copic markers and Lynette was asking last time about something that was more mahogany looking in color. So I'm going to try and do that. Like a deeper brown wood. So because I sketched lightly with the ballpoint pen, it shouldn't bleed as much, but I am using a, or was using rather, a Bic Cristal pen for my brown, in case you're wondering. But let's just get a nice base tone here. Okay, something like that. Maybe I'll extend this down a little bit further. Just vignette it off the page. You know, maybe something like that. All right. <clears throat> and let's see. I guess I could put like a towel on the front. I'm trying to decide if I want to do that. Or maybe some holder on the side. I guess we'll do it on this side. We'll do a towel on, towel thing on the side here. So maybe I'll sketch that in just real quick. Because the towel I can make white. 
Should be easy enough. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Alright. Plus, we can always color over it, white marker it, all that stuff. Okay, cool. That's that's feeling a lot more visually balanced. What's up, Critique? Hello, hello. Arthur, merci por te... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in a Spanish accent. I think that means thank you for the videos. You're welcome. You are welcome. I'm just having fun, and I'm grateful that all of you are here. I really do mean that. But this was just a request from someone to do some... Uh, white stuff so that's what I'm trying to do here so we got our nice white surface there saving these areas for reflections like I was saying okay so right there maybe a little bit in here as well okay stuff like that all right just to kind of help this all relate what's up Vicari welcome back always good to see you Thanks for joining. So let's get the, I need to look at mahogany wood grain. Let's see, mahogany, cause I, I do a generic um, wood grain, but I just wanna see what this kind of looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna use this image. I have an image here. Looks like there's some nice strong dark bits, but not necessarily what I have been doing in the past, so. Let's just have some nice, strong, dark notes here. And then we'll accent, accent that with, I think, got to take into consideration shadowing and light and all that. But let's have some dark, dark spots there as a part of this. Like so. On the top as well. Now I am starting with the lightest marker because I want to go lightest lights to the darkest darks. And this first sketch on the stream, if you guys haven't noticed, is always a little bit like my warm up sketch. Now switching to a little bit darker marker here. And I'm gonna use this to just introduce a bit of the additional texture elements that I'm noticing in the mahogany as well. And then we'll go one step darker on top of this. Catch today live, thanks for joining. We're just rendering this little faucet sink scene here. Request from Vicari. Good to see you too. Will I do some Strathmore tone tan? I mean, this is kind of a similar approach. I don't feel like I need to, but I could. If you feel like this is because it's not the exact same thing. But to me, it's pretty much the same principle and idea, so not really sure what the difference would be. Feel free to ask me any questions while I'm drawing, by the way. It doesn't have to be just about drawing. Anything you guys want to know about being a designer, industry, freelance, working on my own, being a single parent, whatever. I'm open, open to it all. I try to be an open book, but I won't tell you where I live, but <clears throat> I'll answer other questions <laughs> for you guys. 
If you made it over from Instagram, thanks for joining. Just as a reminder, new blog post today on sketchaday.com. Um, a few of you were asking about the 3D files for the marker caddy if you want to print your own. So if you do print it, let me know, hit me up, tag me, whatever. I'd love to see um, what you do or any modifications you make or whatever. Totally open to that. So do let me know if you make that kind of change. Futuristic quarantine mask. I'm not doing anything COVID or quarantine related because I don't want to capitalize on the tragic circumstances right now. So that's something I won't do. I also won't do weapons that are realistic. I've done weapons related projects in my life. I'm not gonna do those again, but um, I just prefer to avoid, avoid that topic personally especially given the news this week. Okay, so we've got some wood here. Probably need to go a little bit darker. Let's see, I want something like a reddish brown. I don't have a deep reddish brown though, so I'm gonna have to be really careful with this one. Just kind of kiss the paper lightly. I just need another kind of tone in here. All right, just kind of a secondary tone for some of these stipples little things um, the nice thing with these papers too is if you do have a full set of colored pencils you can really do a lot with toned paper if you're really into it marker paper is my favorite thing to use however so that's why I use it most of the time but we can keep all of these t uh, toned today. <laughs> I was thinking about doing something like a backpack, maybe a shoe, or whatever comes to mind from you guys. As long as it's not a weapon or a mask, I'm good. What basic exercise do you think will help for product sketches? Um, I do believe in sketching primitive forms, meaning uh, like pyramids, cylinders, spheres, cones, cubes, like doing a lot of those, because that's gonna help you understand form in general. It's a really good exercise if you're trying to get better at sketching. So I highly recommend that. But that's also just how I think. I think in terms of uh, I think in terms of a very principled approach to understanding form and representing and showing form. So that's what I found to be effective for myself in terms of helping develop those skills. All right, just taking this ballpoint pen now where the marker hasn't given me necessarily the best boundary. And we can sketch, stylize, all that stuff. Let's go ahead and work on this white a little bit. The paper is somewhat rough, so it's like wearing down uh, the tip of this pencil really fast. All right, so I'm just creating a little bit of a gradient here we can keep working it a little heavier I'm going whiter from the side in this direction and toward the corner allowing it to be dark and then we'll go ahead and lighten up this corner just a little bit here like so and then the towel now <clears throat> we get to decide what color that towel is um I'm feeling like, let's see, what can I do? Maybe I'll do a green towel, since I already have green. And I've got, ah, this thing's stuck. Yeah, so we'll just do green. Maybe it's a green stripe towel. green and gray. I 
I did green for a reason, just because I have a green paint marker, so I'll be able to help this pop a little bit. Blue towel, yeah, too late. I already went with green. Sorry, guys. So yeah, let me know if you do like the recap videos, if that's been helpful. If not, I just won't even bother. <laughs> <clears throat> I know it's a lot of content, so let me know what you think. I'm trying to get faster at doing those. Um, it does take some time. It's not as time intensive as the regular videos I do, but still. Let me know if that's something you like or want to see or not. This is Sketch Day Live, Friday, May 8th. Hello, hello. Having fun and sketching as always, as much fun as we can. All right, on this edge, I want a little bit of a roll, almost like a reflection or something um, in the environment showing in these corners so just taking a cool gray three now or basic gray three and just hitting these corners just like that let's go ahead and touch up the chrome Now, if this were really in a bathroom, um, you would want to, meaning if, let's just do a little backsplash here. Um, you'd want to, in the reflection, show perhaps, sorry, I'm just trying to map out this tile. Um, you'd want to show perhaps some of the stuff in the environment being reflected into the mirror, okay? You're also gonna have a reflection of the sink. We'll just vignette it though so we don't have to sketch the whole thing in and just use general colors and tones so that the main sketch remains remains the focus. <clears throat> if this is your first time hit subscribe, turn on alerts, share the video. If you want to make a contribution links are in the video frame as well and thank you to those who have in the past not required but always appreciated that's what I say I'm gonna be putting up my stickers on the site as well just as a way to help support um, sketch day so we have the uh, when in doubt rough it out sticker <laughs> that I just made um, I'll have some black Ross stickers as well and then the sketch every damn day stickers. So I'll probably do these in a pack of three or individual. Um, and then if you guys want to support that way, that's also a great way. But if you are a Patreon, I will be sending those to you as well. So just as a thank you always to the Patreons who do get to be a part of the live pre-show as well. All right, let's finish up this tile. I feel like I'm moving slow, but like I said, the first sketch always feels a little bit like a warm up whenever I'm doing these streams. But pretty fun. All right, so I'm just using this ballpoint now because I can get pretty dark and I can also fade as needed. I'm just gonna use this to kind of work on the reflective areas and artifacting on my chrome and then we'll make it really pop with some white paint pen in just a sec I do enjoy drawing on paper because it is inherently more difficult than uh, digital tools with digital tools I can undo I can do a lot of stuff um, when you're sketching with something like a ballpoint pen or better yet, a felt pen, it's a lot harder to execute. And you have to really think about what you're doing. 
So I enjoy that bit of the process. Was my head in the frame a little bit? Maybe some white tile here as well. Yeah, this paper is a little bit rougher than regular accounts on. I'm actually wondering if the other side is smoother. Yeah, the other side of this paper is a little smoother. <laughs> I just discovered. Oh well. Like I said, I haven't done these in a while. I don't typically do them. But y'all wanted to see it. So here it is. Let's see, quick chat, quick chat check-in. Vicari, I don't recall really, but have you done, or could you do product thumbnailing with ink? Like for example, a brush pen. Um, yeah, have I done that? I mean, sometimes I do that in the videos, but are you talking about like doing a video specifically on thumbnailing concepts? Let me know what you mean, what you think on that. All right, now let's get this top edge here. Something like that. Once again, thanks for joining today. Sketch a day live, super fun as always. So unless I get to any other suggestions after, I could look at just doing some quick thumbnails with you guys of some stuff. Um, if there's a specific product or if I can just pick the product and do it too. All right, just getting some shadow here on this pipe and then our chrome bit. With Chrome, remember, the, the entire surface is essentially a mirror. <clears throat> and so you're gonna have colors, you're gonna have tone being reflect, reflected into that Chrome as well. Things in the scene getting compressed, distorted, all of that stuff, okay? So, one of the best ways to learn to draw Chrome is to observe Chrome. So next time you go to a restaurant or a movie theater and you use the bathroom, look at those Chrome pipes, those Chrome things. You'll learn a lot real fast about yourself, but also <laughs> you'll learn a lot about how these reflections and lighting um, kind of work. Once again, this is Sketch Day Live. Thanks for joining. Just doing some tone paper sketching. Maybe everything should be tone paper today. I did say I would do a backpack next, so. Let's see, what white pencil would I recommend? I've been sketching between many of them and would like to stick to one. Um, I use the Prismacolor Premier, but I like a soft lead pencil, personally. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this paper is a little bit rougher than the you know, real Canson paper. This is just some cheap toned paper that I found. I think it was at Target, actually. Really cheap. So it's not really artist, archival quality paper that you might want to be sketching on, but it works. All right, so a couple more things here and then we should be good. I'm gonna wash part of the background here with just a very light gray marker. This is gonna help create some separation between the product and the background, or the environment, I should say. Just a light wash there. <clears throat> Maybe suggest that there's other things in the environment. You can do the same thing down below. All 
especially down here where we're in shadow, you know, this is below the sink. So I'll probably hit that a couple times. Make it a little darker on the side where we have a shadow. We're gonna have some reflections happening, right? In the sink here. So just trying to capture a little bit of that. Also this tile, maybe just a little gray right through that surface in the mirror itself, like I was mentioning. But don't worry, I know it's the same tone, but don't worry, I've got a plan for that. And then let's go ahead and fade out as we move back in the scene, like so. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, I'm using Prismacolor, uh, Prismacolor Premier. As far as the gray marker, I'm using my lightest gray possible to start because I don't want to overwhelm the sketch. And now I'm at a basic gray three, which is kind of like a 30%, you could say. Although chart packs are kind of weird in their color reproduction and accuracy. So your results may vary depending on when you buy the marker, how many times you apply it and so forth, all right? So no guarantees with chart packs. They are somewhat finicky. Is that even a word, finicky? But yeah, check out the blog post if you want that marker caddy file. That's this guy. It's just really great if you're working on a project. Just put it in. And it's free. <laughs> I'm not charging for the file. I just want to see what you guys come up with, improvements, changes, all of that stuff. Um, this is a super quick project for me. So... I'm sure there's there's lots of improvements that could be made to it as well. <clears throat> Thank you, Armin. Yeah, everyone everyone loves a good toned paper sketch. <laughs> you know, it's satisfying to do and work on, but um, it certainly takes a lot of time too. At least I think it does. So I don't typically do them. All right, like I said, I have some green paint marker here. Let's see, whoa, that's really bright green, but I can use that just to help this pop a little bit. Paint marker is nice because it is opaque. So it's gonna really just help things, you know, pop on the paper. If I wanna enhance any of these Highlight spots as well. Use that paint marker. <clears throat> On the front of this, if we are getting, let's see, where am I gonna put this? I think I'm gonna put it, yeah, I'll do it here. So I'm just gonna take this area, like so, and then just paint this in. Because I wasn't quite getting the effect I wanted with just with just the uh, pencil. So I'll just paint this in like so. All right, now it's starting to pop a little bit more. That's a pit, <coughs> pit artist pen. They also have a fine tip version of that as well. It's more of a translucent ink though. So not quite opaque. It's great for blends or kind of a secondary white. This one has a very stiff tip, which is nice, easier to control. For the like really poppy highlights though, what I'm going to do is use Use my Molotow <clears throat> white pen. So if I want there to be just like a really popped highlight on that faucet, almost like it's glowing, then I'll use this pen. And on the background here, you can see just outlining this in white. You see this a lot with tone paper drawings, but it's a little bit of a stylized rim light. 
on the object. I'm going to put some style dots there just to help that pop again. If you ever do the rim light and it feels too intense, you can always, once it's dry, hit it with a little bit of marker. And that's gonna help subdue a bit of the effect. So, like I always say, there's always a fix. And in this case, it is true. If you make a mistake, you know, there's a fix for that. Just getting some of these highlights in here. All right, and in the reflection, actually, I think I'm gonna use my pit pen for this. So pit pen for the reflections highlights. <clears throat> we'll do a nice light brown wash just enough to hint at the wood but I don't want the reflection to take away from the main scene okay so just one tone right there hey Latrice and let's see that's gonna go under let me have the sink right in there yeah so just a little bit of gray now on the shadowed portion of the sink in that reflection and some light pencil on the sink material itself right because i don't want to take away again from the main presentation which is this portion of the sketch So sketch Day Live or Friday's show. I'm back Sunday on or at. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I'm going to be back Sunday around midday. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. This feels really intense, so I'm going to take this gray marker or maybe even a darker gray marker, like this three, and just go over it. And it'll help it feel a little bit less poppy. So just a little trick for you if you are using one of these paint markers and maybe something's a little too intense, you can always adjust from there. All right. Hello, Flo Monster from France. What's up? Bonjour. Sign your work. Call it good. Um, there's probably a lot more I could do to this in terms of pushing contrast like even squinting my eyes and looking at the wood I'm realizing yeah the shadowed area here I need to make that a little darker so I'll just hit that squinting your eyes is always a good way to make sure you have enough contrast it reduces the detail <clears throat> that you're looking at and allows you to focus on value and it will give you opportunities to make things pop. So right here, for example, I'm gonna go quite a bit darker. Since this is an overhang of sorts over the side of the sink, so that feels better already. Some of these reflections that I was kind of putting in here as well. like that Danny R is asking do I remember the car part of a car 
I worked on at GM. It was just an intern project. So I don't recall specifically much about it. It was forever ago too. <clears throat> okay. Something like that. We'll call it good, guys. All right, so there's my... <clears throat> pardon me. There's my toned paper sketch of a sink. My approach would be a little bit different if this were on marker paper, but, you know, I thought this would be fun to kick some dust off the old skill set and see if I could do another one because it's been a while it looks all right I'm okay with that okay so on to the next sketch let's do some sort of backpack all right so I'm just gonna keep this somewhat simple just throw some lines down You know, thinking about, okay, maybe there's some compartments, side pockets, front pocket. I like bags with straps. So then I can tie things to those straps. Interesting handles are always, always a plus. So just blocking that in real quick. As for how you get into the pack, I travel a lot. I like security. Knowing my stuff is all secure. No one's gonna get in there and mess with things. So to that end, maybe I just have, you know, there's two compartments on the inside of this. And to get in, maybe there's just a zipper on the side here. And maybe there's some sort of zipper on the front. That could be cool. You know, and you could get into, say, this side or that side. So with ballpoint, now that I've sketched out my initial shape I can commit to the design by just applying a little bit more pressure or correcting things as needed so this line was a little bit weird at the beginning so now I can correct that maybe this is some sort of loop here like I said I like I like straps, I like straps, maybe elastic things I can loop things into. <clears throat> I travel with my cameras a lot. In fact, this summer, I think I'm gonna just hit the road and travel for a bit, it should be fun. Maybe end up in Chicago, I'm not sure. I might go to California. Assuming the situation is better, it's probably what I'll end up doing. Zipper is almost like a smile. <laughs> it's like a welded, waterproof zipper. Asymmetric, perhaps. All right, so some sort of pack here. I was saying maybe this is some sort of pocket. <clears throat> pocket on this side.
The tree says, come to Chicago. Yeah, I've got a buddy there, um, Hector from Advanced Design. And I've kind of been talking about maybe just hanging out for a bit. So I'll let you know if I do. That'll be fun. <clears throat> Might be interesting figuring out how to do the live shows while I'm on the road, but maybe I could do live appearances. That'd be interesting. Like, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm hosting a live appearance at this bar or whatever. If anyone wants to come hang out, come hang out. I feel like I'm not big enough to do that yet, <laughs> but uh, it certainly would be fun. Like a little drink and draw. Only if you're over 21, guys. I don't need to be going to prison. So sketch a day live. Thanks for drawing or joining. Maybe draw. Maybe drawing as well. If you are drawing, thanks for drawing. Um, I do this a few times a week. So appreciate you being here. I know everyone's busy. They've got stuff to do. So it means a lot. Thank you for supporting the dream, so to speak. Danny R is asking, what school did I attend? I went to Brigham Young University in Salt Lake City, Utah. Or not Salt Lake City. It's actually Provo, Utah, but I live in Salt Lake City. And I, I actually started as a math major. That was one of our questions for the chat the other day. <clears throat> started as a math major and then transitioned, went into design. So that's where I ended up. I feel like doing red. I don't have a red paint marker, but I think we can make it work. I'm gonna try and be careful here. But yeah, I went to BYU, Brigham Young University, Provo, Utah, learned a lot about myself, learned a lot about design. Maybe the red and gray, because of a split look. So whenever I use markers, I try to outline the sections. I don't know if there's any like definitive reason for that beyond I've, it's easier for me to just color when I know <clears throat> the boundary. I even made a mistake there, but that one's fixable. Um, but when I know the boundary, it's a lot easier for me to, <clears throat> For me to just color so that's 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 why I do it this way but whatever works for you I think there's a right or wrong way to do it as long as it looks good in the end all right maybe our handle here is red as well this could be gray or something make that tag red and I think I'll make the straps red as well. Something like that. I'm using chart packs and ballpoint pens. And that's so that the ballpoint pen won't smudge while I'm drawing. It's a thing that ha can happen if you're using alcohol-based markers. I'm trying to figure out how to get people from the Instagram to come over here, but I feel like I feel like that's really difficult. So if you guys have any tips, you know, share the stream, all that good stuff. Much appreciated, but yeah, it seems really difficult to get people to make the trip. It's just much better when I can focus on one chat, one thing, not have to worry about looking at a bunch of stuff. So here's an example where a tan paper can be useful if you are, if you're, hope, if you're trying to save some marker, right? So in my case here, I've got red and I've got some gray. The tan on the paper can almost function like another color.
So if I wanted, say, this bag, actually, let's go ahead and kind of create a line there for the pocket. Um, but if I wanted this bag to have another color, I could actually treat this gray as just a tone, say, on this side. And then now use use my white pencil to lighten things up where I need it. So in that sense, tone paper can be nice for just working quickly. Is there any book I would suggest from product sketch studies or product design studies? Yes, um, I have many. I'm pretty sure maybe I maybe I haven't. I know it's on one of my live videos, but I did go through a bunch of books. Um, How to Draw by Scott Robertson is a great one for drawing. There's Learning Curves is another one that talks about <clears throat> design sketch process. There's also Sketching Product Design and Presentation by Koos. I think he's from the Netherlands. And let's see, what else do we got? I'm just looking at my bookshelf right now because there's a bunch of different books that I've used in the past. Um, but yeah, those, those are the ones that, that are top of mind, at least for me. So check those out. If you find one, if you find one that's good though, like, and you're in the chat, just post it up, tell everyone what it is. I was super bummed this week. My local art store is closed because of all of this stuff going on. Really unfortunate. So reminder again, all of these sketches I will post on the Google Drive for you to check out. So. Be sure to visit that link. All right, just a little bit of white. So it's kind of the opposite of sketching on white paper where with white paper, I'm trying to add some shadow. With, <clears throat> with tone paper, I'm trying to create highlights and shadows to some extent. But you do get that nice base tone that you can work with, which I get that some people like. Helps you move a little faster, maybe even potentially save your markers depending on you know your approach and what you do. So I'm just trying to get these these edges or areas that might be picking up secondary light just to help the form start to pop now that I have the base color down. Okay, that's the purpose of the white. And then having a darker color behind is gonna help pull this forward as well. So like a nice black, for example. Also serves to help clean up your sketch lines. If there's a sketch line that, you know, shut out too much or something. You can also use that black background just to clean things up. I think I'm going to need a new marker soon. Crazy. I've been just hammering these Ohuhu markers that I got. So yeah, I've just been hammering these, so I'm sure they'll run out at some point. All right, I think I'm gonna do one more sketch today. We'll keep this a short, shorter stream. You can also use a black marker to help crisp things up if you were using something like a ballpoint pen. 
you know, mix those those mediums, media. And then kind of like we did with the faucet, just add some rim light to your sketch. There's my first stroke, and now I'm gonna take this more opaque marker and use this to separate the sketch out from the background even more. Like so. So now that's starting to pop a lot more. So yeah, let me know what you guys would like to see next. Happy to do whatever it is you want to see. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you joined, Critique. Thanks for finding it. Where did you find it initially? I'm curious. Was it Instagram or somewhere else? Alright, a couple more things I want to do here. The straps need to be a little bit darker. I need some more value differences here on the side. And then I think we'll be in a pretty good spot. The goal is to not make it seem too flat and find the right balance between uh, what you're trying to communicate and the finish of the sketch. So just a little darker red marker here. Get some of these shadows in. Oh, Critique said one of his design school faculty suggested. Okay, cool. I'm glad you're joining, man. Thank you. So yeah, after the stream, I will be updating the store You'll want to sign up for the newsletter. The blog's live again. So if you want to check out process stuff or articles, resources, guides, things like that, that's what you can expect to find there. Obviously, it's not all up right now, but that's where I'll be posting all of that type of content. Okay, <clears throat> let's get this pocket a little bit darker. If you take a minute to look around your room, wherever you are, YA1 is asking, can I do videos on how to sketch? I'm not sure if you're being serious or if you're just messing with me, but um, <laughs> if you just take a minute to look around your room, you'll see that where a surface changes direction, you have a change in contrast, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. So I need some intensity in terms of the shadowing happening in this pocket as we move up the side of the sketch. That's what I'm trying to recreate here. Yeah, I can't tell if YA, I'll just say YA is being serious or not because I have over 300 videos of sketches, so, um, and how to sketch. So you can always search the channel if there's a topic you're interested in. It's likely that I've covered it, and if I haven't, hit me up, and I'll take a look at covering that for you. Sketch Today Live, thanks again for joining. We'll be back on Sunday with another show. All the sketches from this stream will be uploaded to 
our Google Drive. And I'm going to start clearing out some of the older stuff. So if you want to get that, head over there, check it out. Just put some stitch marks here. Um, but head over to the Google Drive, check it out if you are interested in those high resolution sketches. The downloadable from the blog article today is free as well. If you want to print your own marker caddy, and you have a 3D printer of some sort or access to one, that's something you can do. Maybe some sort of logo here. If I want this pocket to have maybe a little texture, I'm just gonna add some hatch lines over it, over the marker, like so. Can also help with some of this fold crease definition just by shading it in. Little trick I picked up on one of my internships for shadows. Yeah, I don't sketch with ballpoint pen a ton, so it's hard for me to sometimes remember, oh yeah, you don't, you have some pressure sensitivity built in here and I can go thick to thin or whatever, but it is fun. It's almost like having a pencil that you don't have to sharpen, almost, except I can't turn this on its side and shade with it, so. What difficulty did I face <clears throat> at the initial stage of my design career? I did a video on the channel about <clears throat> critique and I'm gonna be doing another one actually, but um, it was about the relationship between you and your work. And that's one of the things that was difficult for me at the beginning of my career is I took feedback very personally and it was really hard to, um, to progress because I was so fixated on whatever the feedback was saying and it felt like the person might have been attacking me or whatever. Um, so I'll share this, I'll share this uh, link here and you can watch that. But this, this kind of talks a little bit about some of what <clears throat> I experienced early on in my career. <laughs> Roshan, do I post live sketching tutorials on YouTube? That's a good idea. Maybe I should start doing that. I'll think about it. Thank you. All right, so what should our next sketch be? I was thinking of doing something like a shoe or vacuum cleaner or um, like a toilet. Since it's white, it'd be hard, really hard to do. We're keeping it on toned paper today, so... You guys let me know what you'd like to see. Someone said a futuristic car. I'm trying not to do too many cars. There's plenty of car videos on my channel if you guys want to check it out. Plenty. Having trouble keeping proportions when sketching products in perspective. Okay, we can do that. I will try and bake that into the next topic. So let's, let's pick a topic and then I'll do that for the next sketch. And we'll probably go for another 30, 20, 30 minutes here. And then we'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for hanging. <clears throat> just a quick recap. This is just a quick backpack sketch. Some things I'm not totally happy with on this. I think I was a little too extreme on how much this kicked in. So if anything, I would relax it, maybe push this back a little bit, but um, Still covers the principles. I just like to point out things I'm not happy with so that you guys can learn from my mistakes and know that, oh, he's not perfect either. Um, I think a lot of uh, 
educators online, they don't really point out mistakes or opportunities for improvement. <clears throat> and it's just like, oh yeah, here it is, it's perfect. Um, but I think, I think failure is an opportunity to learn. So I really do believe that. <clears throat> and I believe in sharing that with you guys. A couple dots here just for texture. Ooh, a kettle with a glass of tea. Okay, let's do that. And we'll talk about translating proportions from side view to a main sketch. All right, so now I've got a little texture on at least. <clears throat> Maybe there's some logo tag or badge here. I don't know. All placeholder stuff, but Here's our quick backpack sketch. Always sign your work and date it. I need to get back in the habit myself. This is what, five, eight, <clears throat> May 8th. All right, so there's our first sketch. We did a little tone paper, bathroom thing. Here's the next one, tone paper, uh, backpack thing. And Roshan made a suggestion to do uh, tea. <clears throat> Ooh, this paper is really smooth. I think I think this one will be, yeah, this will be nice. <clears throat> All right, so some sort of kettle. Glass of tea. Oh, what's up, Tea Soul Kid from Provo, Utah? Wow, I'm just uh, I'm in Salt Lake. <clears throat> Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I've got to wrap this up in like 20 minutes because I have a phone call after <laughs> after the stream here. So um, I am recording. I'll upload the segment. So if you just missed anything, it's all good. Okay, so let me switch to some cheap paper. Not cheap, but um, thinking paper. And I'll show you a little, let's do a little mini segment on translating from orthographic views to perspective views. So... Let's say I do, you know, Roshan asked me to do this scene of this tea kettle. <clears throat> so let's say, we'll just do something simple. Simple tea kettle, like so. These lines are projection lines, so now I can think of, okay, what does this design look like from the top? Well, there's a spout actually, so I already made a mistake. And I think I'm drawing, let's see. Weird. Paper feels weird today. Okay. I thought I was drawing on the uh, back side of this marker paper. All right. So it's something like that. Okay. And then we need a handle of some sort. I'm going to, I'm going to align my handle with my spout like so really small sketch. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is like a front view or technically this should be the front, but we'll call this the right view. All right, and this is kind of how you work in CAD as well. You set up your views, you have a, a general understanding of the form where these transitions are happening, right? So this is a kind of a funky transition because I've got three circles and this one dips in in the front, but not necessarily to the side, or maybe it does. You know, maybe it does have a little bit of a, a dip here. So there's a lot of information packed into these thumbnails. And so now, as I'm trying to translate this into perspective, right? I like to think in terms of squares. So there's one square. <clears throat> and by thinking in terms of squares, it makes it really easy to multiply, translate, and set up my proportions. All right, so let's say this is my first square. My first step is to divide that square. And now I can look at things like, okay, if this is a square, how does, I'm gonna use my fancy finger calipers here, <laughs> but I can just pinch and look at this drawing and I go, oh, okay. So as far as the height and width, if this is a square, when I go to the height, the Z height of the product, I'm about one square up. So my first step is gonna be drawing what a square might be in, in perspective going up in this direction 
as it relates to the square here. Okay, and this is just an estimation. Ooh, glass tea kettle, transparent, all right. <clears throat> um, this is just an estimation of that perspective. And I also know that, okay, if this is a square, how what, what percentage of a square is this, all right? So you can use your finger calipers. I'm just gonna eyeball this and say it's about a fourth. Now, it's a, if it's about a fourth, there's an easy way to multiply a square in perspective. And I'm just getting a different color here, guys, so I can show you. So if I draw a line from this corner through this point, okay, like so, and extend this up, this is actually the edge of the next square up. It's a little bit off because my points are off and all that, but now I can divide this into four, and this is actually the top of the kettle if I have one and a quarter of a square going up. So now I extend out this way, like so, and I finish out the shape, and I have a proportional bounding box that I can use to sketch that kettle. <clears throat> so with that, all that hard work, I can now come back in here and do my ellipses. I know on the back side, like I said, we have a smaller one about a quarter of the way in, and then on the bottom here, you know, assuming this line is tangent, now we have this coming in like so, and then out. If I find the midpoint, again, looking at the square underneath, this is about the midpoint. You do this enough, you can you can estimate. Just go for it. And now I can draw my spout in like so. Here's my handle. I didn't really draw Did I draw the handle? Yeah, I did. So here's a little handle here. Roshan wants it to be glass, so we'll draw through. And I'm going to draw it again on that paper. Now, Roshan, is this a kettle that you would uh, heat and teep your steam in? Like some sort of electric inductive tea kettle? Is that what you're thinking? Anyhow, that's how you translate a proportion from the side and top views here. So side, top, front, map that into perspective, and then use this as an underlay to create your final sketch. Okay, so that's just a quick process of translating those side views to your perspective. And I'll make sure this is a segment from the stream, um, translating sketches from orthographic to perspective, but that's that's kind of my thought process as I do that. All right, Roshan wants a transparent tea kettle with uh, some sort of, is it a glass? Let's see, a glass kettle with a glass of, oh my goodness. <laughs> <coughs> you want me to be on here for the next two hours, don't you? What's up, Jose? Hello. All right, I'm gonna start with an ellipse up top. Roshan asked for this, and let's let's just keep that design going. It's kind of a pet design of mine, anyways. This uh, I feel like designers always have like some. Let's see, is that that's not accurate? Um, they always have some sort of like design that you you always want to see made. I know I have a few. But I like the idea of this kind of straight-backed kettle or pitcher. I've done pitchers, kettles, whatever. Um, and the other thing I like is some sort of design detail that you know rolls into the spout here. And then becomes the handle. So Definitely a pet thing of mine. So for the top, Roshan, what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> I'm gonna keep the top plastic. I just, I don't know how the whole thing could be glass. So I'm gonna keep this as like an insert into the glass, right? So there's a glass rim 
This is gonna be a fun one. I, I'm just giving you crap, but it's gonna be fun. Um, so keeping keeping this a little separate from the rim and having this color is way off, by the way. <laughs> just so you know, it actually looks fine on the stream. This is weird. I'm using an old Apple Cinema display for my secondary screen setup um, for the streaming. So it always throws me off when I look at it and I go, whoa, make sure you download the, the final sketch because the color reproduction is terrible. All right, some sort of inductive kettle here is what Roshan wanted. No templates, no Photoshop today. We're keeping it real. No tools. This is this is raw. This is how we roll. I'm starting to feel like an old fuddy duddy. Because man, digital tools have gotten so good. It's weird. It's starting to become more difficult to tell what is real. What is deserving of merit? And appreciation in terms of skill <clears throat> it's really hard I think there's a term for that where so the uncanny valley something like that in uh, augmented reality via uh, virtual reality the uncanny valley all right so there's our kettle and then we need a cup or glass. I'm just gonna do a simple, maybe it has a wood base. That would actually be cool as a set. A little wood base and some sort of coaster. Thick. That's how I like them. Thick. Thick glass. All right. I think I'm losing my mind. I've been, I've been kind of working nonstop this week, so I feel like I'm losing my mind. Also having fun, but yeah. <clears throat> Sketch a day live, thank you. Okay, so you you suggested that the T be the color of the paper. So that's what I'm gonna roll with. So this, this is gonna focus more on the glass itself. Getting that right. I need to think through this actually. Um, I'm just realizing. So I wanted some sort of inductive thing and maybe there's just a little locating point of some sort. So I wanna capture that. Okay, that's enough. And then this bottom piece could be some sort of different material. Yeah, these big these big crystal pens are super nice <clears throat> you can go really light especially if you get the medium I think um, if you're curious about the materials I use at any point sketchaday.com slash stuff is where I post all of that <clears throat> but yeah these are really nice Maybe we should do some like steam coming out too. Yeah, uncanny valley. There's that there's there's a moment right now happening in sketching where we're kind of coming on this coming up on this like uncanny valley, <laughs> so to speak, where literally I'll go on Instagram and I'll look at a sketch. And I've done it too. But I look at a sketch and I'm like, is that is that real? Like was that done 
with pens and you know all the traditional stuff I'm used to it's really hard to tell Roshan's actually really good at that too <clears throat> follow him if you're if you're into Keyshot uh, 3d rendering compositing doing all that cool stuff you'll want to check out his Instagram it's unreal so I'm not just saying that because I know who he is but he does good work so check that out do I use watercolor yes I do use watercolor not for product rendering so much but one of my favorite things to do when I'm road tripping which I'm so excited about for this summer like you guys have no idea I love just traveling I'm just gonna go to some random small towns near me and just hang out for a bit but I love to watercolor instead of take pictures of everything it's something I like to do just kind of do some urban sketching or you know things like that something I really enjoy so yeah I'll be doing some of that <clears throat> Yeah, feel free to post your link, Roshan. I mean, you, you do some pretty amazing stuff, so feel free to post up. All right, let's get this handle in. Maybe the handle is just a metal handle, basic gray. Okay, I was making sure I was using the right gray here. Sometimes I forget which marker I'm using, and then I make a colossal mistake. Yeah, I think he has a YouTube channel as well. So you can check that out if you like 3d stuff he also sketches but hang out with me when you're sketching don't cheat on me you know how there's like Netflix cheating this would be like sketch day sketch content cheating if you go there okay someone asked for blue earlier so let's do some blue stuff here maybe maybe yeah I can do blue I have blue pencil I can do blue You said you take a picture and all. Do I use a roll camera? No, I use a, uh, I have a Nikon. Let's see, it's a Nikon D800. That's what I love to shoot with. Um, should I do blue? Is blue gonna be weird? Uh, stainless blue. Maybe I just need a light blue. All right, that's fine. Um, yeah, I have a Nikon D800 that I use for like, documenting process stuff or taking pictures of family that kind of thing that's what I use I dabble in photography um, I have a few kind of pet projects that I'm I've been working on for a few years actually and I'm hoping to I need to share more stuff with you guys because I feel like people think I'm just the sketch guy, but I do a lot more. <laughs> so, anyhow, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying I do a lot more than just sketch cool stuff. Sketching is a means to an end for me, it's not the end. It's all part of the process as much as video editing is or has been. So right here, I'm just trying to get, get that blue in place, okay? Let's make the base blue as well. Get our shadow core outline. Leverage the paper to be your highlights where possible, where it makes sense. I mean, I, I, I'm old enough to have used a roll camera, so I just haven't, I, like, where, where would I even develop the film now? I don't even know. Do people, do, like, who develops film these days? I remember the last time I used a roll camera. But, yeah, it's been forever ago, so. Some sort of rubber base here, or elastomer. Yeah, this, this paper has been interesting because some of the sheets are like super rough, but this one's smooth and buttery. It's got a really nice, 
really nice grain to it. All right, so glass. Glass is tough. Now that I got these base colors in, um, the tough part about glass is you really have to start by thinking about a couple things, all right? So where is your light source? Which direction? There's a couple clues here that I've given you guys already about the direction of the light source, all right? So think about where the shadows are, where they're pointing, all of that stuff. So I've got my lights to the right. I mean, typically, if you've seen me sketch before, I like to have my light sources to the up, upper side of the sketch and to the right. That's just what I'm used to. But upper part to the right. And you can also tell because of the shadow direction right here, all right? So, Let's see, Roshan said, oh, you sent me a DM? Sorry, I can't check Instagram at the same time. My, camera, my phone is uh, indis indisposed right now, so I'm just gonna go for it. Were you working on a tea kettle, Roshan? Is that why you want me to sketch this? I'm curious now. So here in the gaps that I have sketched in the side, I'm trying to capture artifacting and artifacting just means that there are you know depending on how thick the glass is there are things in the environment that are going to be compressed they'll get a little darker that you'll see in the sides of the glass if something's really dark you're going to see that on the side as well so i'm just going to get some of these dark edges in right on the rim of this kettle as well right in there Roshan wanted the kettle here to, or the, the tea rather, to be the color of the paper. So I'm gonna try and preserve that as much as possible. Here's our background it's gonna show through. Be a little bit distorted. All right, so I wanna capture that distortion. So if the tea is the color of the kettle, what I need to do is make the background a little darker. And that's where the, the very light gray comes in handy. Yeah, I was just making sure this is a gray one. I was like, that's kind of dark. But that's where it comes in handy because now I can create a little bit of a separation here between between the liquid in the in the vessels here and the background itself. All right. And then reflection wise, if the surface is reflective, we're going to have a little indication of the vessel. Maybe the wood as well, kind of happening. Same thing here. Something like that. <clears throat> oh shoot, you can't do uh, tea kettles. There's another dude on Instagram, um, Frywork, F-R-Y-E work. And he, yeah, this sketch is way better than the first sketch I was doing. So that's why I say the, fir the first sketch on the stream is always like the warm up sketch for me. Um, but he works for Honda and he was telling me he can't, he loves sketching cars, but he can't sketch normal cars. So he does these like really cool paintings. I'm like, dude, it's awesome. Anyway, he does these really cool paintings. Check him out at Frywork on Instagram. I just, the, the thing I enjoy, <clears throat> or one of the things rather I enjoy about to toned paper, and like I said, I haven't done these in a while, but one of the things I do enjoy is just how impactful highlights can be when you start to add those. And it's really easy to obviously get out of control doing that. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize you were doing a T project, so.
little shadow there, shadow core. Again, just the thing I learned on, on my internships, you can sometimes outline a shadow, especially with ballpoint pen, and just kind of shade it in like this. It has a really cool, cool effect. <clears throat> All right, so the background color here. What color should we make the background? I want to know from you guys. Should we go with black? Should we go with a color? Actually, Roshan, you pick the topic, so you tell me what color should the background be? You tell me. What color are you feeling for the background? I'll work on this wood in the meantime. Similar to the, the first sketch we did. This is Sketch Today Live. Thanks again for hanging. This is our final sketch for the day. Appreciate you watching, being here. If you like it, share the, share the stream. Also, come say hi on the socials. I'm at sketchaday.com on Instagram. On the Twitters, I'm at Daily Sketches. Check out the blog today. I posted video and blog of my process working on the tea kettle, but more importantly, or not the tea kettle, the uh, marker caddies that I did. But more importantly, I also have a downloadable available <clears throat> if you guys want it. So check that out. I'm just mapping out some potential reflections, reflective things here on the surface. I'm gonna make some of these really pop, nice and white. Okay, so just mapping out those areas with my ballpoint pen. I need a new sharpener. I've been thinking about um, taking my sharpener, one of them anyways, and like designing a new housing for it. 3D printing it. And then sharing that with you guys so if that sounds interesting let me know it's one of those things I've been thinking about so you can see the white immediately just helps things pop a lot more we'll help some of these out with some white pen as well medium cool gray or brown your call it's a tough subject <laughs> thanks man Just trying to make it pop. So I just noticed that my paper was picking up some of the texture from below. It's very subtle, but it's right there. So it's picking up the grid texture of this uh, cutting mat that I have put down. So I'm just putting some regular paper underneath right here as we build this highlight area. Okay, let's get some reflected light, secondary light source, sometimes called. I like to call it just reflected light. Or maybe there's something else in the scene that's affecting this. And then right next to that is where I wanna do, okay, let's have some, some stuff that's like, you know, maybe more opaque that is impacting or reflecting into this glass. Sketch a day live. Thanks for joining again. Wrapping up here. Just with a quick glass sketch. Requested by Roshan. Roshan also contributed in the past, so thank you for your support. Much appreciated. Always. Also super talented. I'm surprised he's watching because he doesn't need to be here. Maybe he's, maybe he's hoping to get some secrets to share with his peeps. I see you, bro. I see you. All right, so maybe just an intense, you know, something in the environment's like right there. I'm taking the picture. I'm right there. If you want to stylize it, you could, you know, add a couple of extra strokes, for example. 
But the important thing is I need a core of darkness. A core of darkness! <laughs> um, <laughs> to kind of help that out. Uh, next to this highlight, I'm just going to hit it with a quick stroke just to help pop that. And then we're just going to keep building. <clears throat> okay, I've got my Copic Opaque White that I can use here. Um, Roshan suggested like a brown background. I think that's cool. I think that would work. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do a very deep brown. This E49. Yeah, thanks for the challenge as always. Um, it's one of the reasons I like suggestions is if I don't get suggestions, I tend to do what's comfortable for me. And then you guys don't get to see me mess up. I think seeing me mess up is important, honestly. Because it shows you that a lot of these people you look up to online, whatever, like we all make mistakes, but you never see those mistakes. And I've been trying to think about, okay, how do I... How do I make this valuable for these guys? How do I make this something that you'd want to come back and watch? And I think owning your mistakes and just showing them and not being afraid to say, yeah, you know, I messed up here and here's what I learned and here's where you can learn. Like, I think there's value there. Unless, I mean, if you want to see perfect stuff, there's plenty of channels that'll give you pre-recorded content that's perfect, but I like being able to talk, interact, Keep it live, keep it real. Super fun. Like, <laughs> I can't tell you how much I look forward to these days, times. I do need breaks though. I mean, it's intense. <clears throat> Doing these live shows, presentations, it really is intense, but I also really enjoy it. So thank you. All right, so not quite black, more of a brown, creating a little bit of a sketchy gradient here in the back. Really old school looking sketch, actually. Really old school looking. I need to get the shadows on the ground. So start with your lightest light. Education never ends, that is so true. I'm always learning, man. Like the stuff you post, the stuff other people post, I'm always learning something. Um, this is actually a cheat because this little coaster or whatever would not be casting a shadow that dark, but it's all good. I do want to I do want to lighten up on the ground here. I'll show you a thing you can do because if you have liquid in the vessel, it's not necessarily always going to cast a shadow. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of and I don't know the right term. Maybe Roshan knows, but a little when the light passes through and kind of interacts with the shadow. On the ground you get um, just a little bit of a highlight in that shadow here's our reflection just make sure we're reflecting our highlights too okay in that ground plane on the glass we'll do the same thing and then we'll finish finish things off with uh, our like highlight pops Thanks for joining Sketch a Day Live today. I am famished, so I'm going to engorge myself. <laughs> or gorge, not engorge. Gorge myself after this. Had a fantastic run this morning. So it's only fitting that I feast. Feast on all the things. <clears throat> all right, so with this tea... In this vessel I have a wood base so it's almost like the glass is maybe slumped and molded into this wood base so here I am going to just use a little gray marker on the base on the inside for the rest of it like Roshan requested I'm gonna keep as if the tea is the color of the paper. Same thing here. OK, 
okay everything except the tea in this vessel just keep it a little bit darker although let's see I do have this rubber or some sort of plastic base so I need to make this a little bit darker quick hit over the top and then I'm gonna just shade in the bottom here maybe add a little bit of texture to this piece although I did pull a little trick here maybe it's a mistake whatever you want to call it but um, on this side it looks like this inserts on the inside and then on this side it looks like on the outside so I'm gonna make it on the inside just to give it some clarity refraction and caustics yes refraction and caustics so on the ground here we're gonna get depending on where the light is we're gonna get some refraction and caustics thank you Roshan happening on the ground so shade that in with a little pencil you know as the lights traveling through the glass for example right so top from the right you're gonna get some of that happening on the surface so sketch day live Friday May 8th thank you for being a part of the stream as always Roshan gave me a very hard topic today so much appreciated for the challenge As always okay so we'll just keep working this and with markers you know you want to think of the ink as not even think of it it really is translucent so that's why I work lightest lights or light till I get it right because you're essentially just building up value not subtracting or doing any funny stuff when it comes to the values at play. Hello, huzzah. You need to give water shot one day, Roshan. Sketching, you can try sketching for once in your life. I thought you sketch all the time. Just giving you crap, of course. But yeah, try tone paper. I, I, it feels a little gimmicky, so that's part of why I don't do it a lot. Like you do something like this and it just blows up on Instagram. <sighs> I don't know, maybe that means I should be doing it more. I guess it depends on what your objectives and goals are. I just want people to come watch the, the YouTube stream, so. <laughs> maybe I will. Um, I always do post these after though, so feel free to check. Check out the Instagram, check out the Google Drive. It's all there. Um, let's see, we should add some steam to this. I haven't even gotten to the paint marker yet, guys, and that's where it's just gonna be like, Bleh, whoa, what just happened? So hang tight. If you've been watching this the whole time and you're like, oh man, I gotta go take a bio break or pee break. Just hang tight. Or if you're like, man, I really gotta go finish Narcos Mexico, which frankly I wanna do today. I will check out your channel, Hazar. I guess it's unfair of me to ask you guys to subscribe if I don't check out your stuff, so I will commit to checking out some stuff if you guys subscribe. If you do good stuff, I'll subscribe to yours. How about that? So yeah, tone paper is different. I mean, you kind of have to just work with whatever colors you're getting. <clears throat> um, 
you're not always going to know what the outcome will be when you, you know, apply that marker to paper. So in the case of gray on top of yellow, if it's a cool gray, it's going to look a little bit different, right? So it's something to consider. But more importantly, just be open to experimentation. Try new things. Sketching for me is about creating symbols that represent reality. It's not about copying reality. But you do need to know the principles so you can bend the rules if you need to. All right. And I think that's important, more so than making sure everything is like totally perfect. Thanks for joining me on Sketch Day Live today. All right, so now we've gotten to the white marker and I'm using the somewhat translucent white to start. Not quite to the Moloto white marker yet, but you can see things are starting to pop and glow and shine and sparkle and all that good stuff. Um, so you do kind of want to use it sparingly. If you need the rim light, you can add it. In this case, I don't feel like I need it so much. <clears throat> but looking at this, I can tell this glass, this glass is just begging. on the rim here. A bit of a reflection there. Put that in. Okay, so I'm looking at this. There's a couple things I want to try, but I'm like, do I do more? Do I do more for you? I don't know. All right, this is a cool gray too. Just want to work on having a little separation here. Maybe just a little. Since the T itself <clears throat> is the color of the paper, that's kind of what we were going for as requested by Roshan. And maybe I should have used like a darker paper, but we'll roll with it. Keep building those values, implied reflections, and so forth. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. If you're just joining, remember we are going live again on Sunday. That'll be around 12, around 12 Pacific. That's when I go live on Sundays, depending on my kids' situation. They're currently yelling right now, so I'm not sure what's happening. But um, depending on that kid's situation, I go live on Sundays, so around 12 Pacific. I think that's minus seven UTC, if I remember correctly. on wrapping up here um, just a reminder I will be sending out the article in the newsletter as well but uh, worked on that 3d printed marker stand and oh shoot yeah <laughs> RIP to that phone call <laughs> let's see they're probably texting me right now actually uh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to bounce in a minute. So I think we pushed it back to six minutes from now. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Just a quick recap. Here's what we did today. We did our tea kettle. Let me sign this. All these sketches are available as well if you want to purchase. Let's see, this is five, eight, 20. Um, available for purchase, so if this is something you want, I'd be happy to package and mail that up to you. We also did the sink, which took way too long, but it was a good warm-up sketch. And we did this backpack sketch on tone paper as well. I kind of wish I'd used a gray paper for this, but it turned out all right. In any case, thanks for hanging, guys. A um, couple housekeeping things. Let's see, front, auto. Oh, my front camera turned off. Dang it. Wait, let's see. Am I upside down? All right, my battery's gonna die, so I only have a little bit of time here. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging. I really appreciate it. If you wanna donate, con contribute, all that stuff, links are in the video frame. Uh, stay tuned for this week. I'm gonna be trying to upload a bit more technical content as suggested by Patreon Matt, so thank you for your support and being willing to uh, pitch in as a Patreon. Patreons have the ability to kind of lead and direct the way we go with things. And we have a pre-show just for Patreons where you get to hang out with me. Right now we have a very small group, so it's kind of a, a fun opportunity to interact before the real show happens. We'll be doing another one of those on Sunday. So sign up if you're interested and you get a free sticker. Also, I love you. <laughs> no, but really I do appreciate Appreciate you guys watching so thanks and we'll see you next time here on sketch a day live bye guys